The mysterious realm of space is full of mind-boggling wonders that never cease to amaze us. From mesmerizing auroras to dazzling galaxies, space is brimming with breathtaking sights that leave us in awe. But did you know that there are also some truly surprising phenomena out there that you've probably never heard of? Even the concepts of them are quite brainstorming for us. In this video, we're going to explore seven of the most fascinating and unexpected space phenomena that you never knew existed. Get ready to expand your horizons and discover the incredible mysteries that lie through the cosmos. But before we embark on that journey, let us remind you to subscribe to this channel and turn on the bell icon to get more brainstorming videos like this. With that said, let's jump on today's menu. Let's start with zombie satellites first, which are also known as dead satellites. These are man-made objects that are no longer functional but continue to orbit the Earth. One of the most intriguing events related to zombie satellites is the LES-1 satellite. This satellite was launched in 1965 to study the Earth's magnetic field, but it lost contact with Earth in 1967 and was presumed dead. However, in 2013, Amateur radio operators detected a signal coming from the LES-1 satellite, which had been silent for over 40 years. The signal was weak and intermittent, leading some experts to speculate that the satellite's battery had failed and was intermittently recharging due to the angle of the solar panels relative to the sun. The cause of the signal remains a mystery, but it is believed that the satellite is in a decaying orbit and will eventually burn up in the Earth's atmosphere. These satellites may have malfunctioned, run out of fuel, or become obsolete and have been abandoned by their operators. However, they remain in orbit and can pose a risk to other operational satellites and space missions. Zombie satellites can range in size from small CUVSATs to large communication or navigation satellites. They can remain in orbit for years, decades, or even centuries, depending on their altitude and the nature of their orbit because they are no longer controlled or monitored by their operators. Zombie satellites can collide with other objects in orbit, creating dangerous debris that can damage active satellites or spacecraft. To mitigate the risk posed by zombie satellites, various methods have been proposed, such as using ground-based lasers to deorbit them or developing technologies to capture and remove them from orbit. As the number of satellites in orbit continues to increase, these are often posing a threat to active satellites and space missions. These satellites may be out of control, inoperable, or simply abandoned. Here are some other zombie satellites. Vanguard 1. It was one of the earliest artificial satellites launched by the U.S. in 1958. It was used to study the Earth's magnetic field and was also the first satellite to use solar cells to power its instruments. Vanguard 1 is now considered a zombie satellite as it no longer communicates with Earth and is predicted to remain in orbit for at least another 240 years. Transit 5B5 This was a navigation satellite launched by the U.S. Navy in 1963. It was designed to detect and locate the position of ships at sea. Transit 5B5 is now a zombie satellite as it has been dead for decades, but it still orbits the Earth every 94 minutes, posing a risk to other satellites in orbit. Next, we got galactic cannibalism, also known as galactic mergers or accretion events, which is a process in which one galaxy merges with or accretes material from another galaxy. This phenomenon is relatively common in the universe, and it plays a significant role in the evolution of galaxies. Galactic cannibalism occurs when two galaxies come close enough together that their gravitational fields interact, causing them to merge or accrete material. The process can take millions or even billions of years, depending on the size and mass of the galaxies involved. During a merger or accretion event, the gas, dust, and stars of the two galaxies can be thrown into chaotic motion, leading to the formation of new structures such as tidal tails, bridges, and rings. The gas and dust can also trigger the formation of new stars, leading to bursts of star formation in the merged galaxy. Galactic cannibalism can also have significant effects on the black holes at the centers of galaxies. If the two galaxies have black holes, they can merge to form a larger black hole. 
The process of black hole mergers is thought to be responsible for the formation of some of the most massive black holes observed in the universe. Galactic cannibalism is a natural process that plays a crucial role in shaping the evolution of galaxies over time. By studying the properties of merging galaxies, astronomers can gain insights into the formation and evolution of the universe as a whole. There are many examples of galactic cannibalism that have been observed in the universe. Here are a few notable examples. The Milky Way and the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy The Milky Way, our home galaxy, is currently undergoing a process of accretion as it absorbs the Sagittarius Dwarf Galaxy. The Sagittarius Galaxy is being torn apart by the gravitational forces of the Milky Way and has left behind a trail of stars known as the Sagittarius Stream. The Antenna Galaxies The Antenna Galaxies are a pair of interacting galaxies located approximately 45 million light-years away in the constellation Corvus. The galaxies are currently in the process of merging, and the collision has triggered intense bursts of star formation. The Cartwheel Galaxy The Cartwheel Galaxy is a ring-shaped galaxy located approximately 500 million light-years away in the constellation Sculptor. The ring shape of the galaxy is thought to have been caused by a collision with a smaller galaxy that occurred approximately 100 million years ago. After that, we'll talk about dark flow, which is a controversial phenomenon observed in the large-scale structure of the universe, where galaxy clusters appear to be moving in a common direction at speeds that cannot be accounted for by the known gravitational forces. The term dark in the name refers to the fact that the source of this motion is unknown and cannot be explained by the visible matter that we can observe. This has led some scientists to speculate that there may be some unseen dark matter or dark energy that is causing this phenomenon. The dark flow was first proposed in 2008 by a team of astrophysicists led by Alexander Kashlinsky, who studied the cosmic microwave background radiation CMB, the afterglow of the Big Bang, and found that clusters of galaxies were moving in a direction that was inconsistent with the overall expansion of the universe. This suggested that there was some other force at work, pulling the galaxy clusters in a specific direction. The dark flow has been the subject of debate among scientists. Some researchers have proposed alternative explanations for the observed motion, such as gravitational lensing or systematic errors in the data. However, other studies have confirmed the existence of the dark flow, and it remains an active area of research. If the dark flow is indeed caused by an unseen force, it could have significant implications for our understanding of the universe and its origins. It could also provide clues to the nature of dark matter and dark energy, which are still some of the biggest mysteries in modern astrophysics. The existence of dark flow is still a matter of debate among scientists, and it remains a controversial topic. However, there have been several studies and observations that suggest the possible existence of this phenomenon. Here are a few examples. Cosmic Microwave Background CMB, Radiation In 2008, a team of astrophysicists led by Alexander Kashlinsky analyzed data from the WMAP satellite, which measured the CMB radiation and found evidence of a dark flow. They observed that galaxy clusters were moving in a direction that was inconsistent with the overall expansion of the universe, indicating that there was some other force at work. Observations of Galaxy Clusters Several studies have observed the motion of galaxy clusters and found evidence of a dark flow. For example, a 2010 study by Ryan Keisler and his team used data from the South Pole Telescope to observe the motion of galaxy clusters and found evidence of a dark flow in the direction of the Centaurus and Hydra clusters. Gravitational Lensing In 2013, a team of astronomers led by Tim Schrabach studied the effect of gravitational lensing on distant galaxies and found evidence of a dark flow. They had observed that the light from distant galaxies was being distorted in a way that could not be explained by the known gravitational forces, suggesting the presence of some other force at work. Let's move on to the next. On August 15, 1977, the Big Ear Radio Telescope in Delaware, Ohio, received the most powerful signal it would ever detect during its decades of observations. The signal lasted just 72 seconds, but when an astronomer spotted it on a computer printout days later, 
He was so impressed that he quickly scrawled WOW in red pen across the page. The data looked much like what SETI astronomers expected to see from an alien intelligence. However, despite many attempts to follow up on the find, the so-called WOW signal has never reappeared. The WOW signal has captivated the public's imagination in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence SETI. It is seen as the most promising potential detection of alien life ever. But others see it as a triumph of publicity over science. Seth Shostak, the senior astronomer at the SETI Institute, says that nobody has ever found another explanation for what that might have been, and that if the signal wouldn't have, wow, written across it, no one would have ever heard of it. One-off signals like this were common back in the early days of SETI, and astronomers are still searching for the return of the wow signal. Jerry Emmon was reviewing the latest batch of computer printouts from the Big Ear Radio Observatory, where he was volunteering as an astronomer. On August 17, 1977, Emmon spotted the set of numbers and letters that looked like nonsense to the untrained eye. But to Emmon, the data meant that Big Ear had picked up a very strong signal that started out low, increased in strength, and then dropped off again. The signal also only appeared in one of 50 possible channels. The WOW signal was a narrowband signal that was detected at Big Ear Observatory in 1993. The SETI project at Big Ear lasted for 24 years, making it the longest-running continuous SETI search in history. But the investigators never picked up anything else quite like the WOW signal. In the end, Big Ear's death came just a few years after Congress deemed the search for extraterrestrial intelligence unworthy of taxpayer funds and the observatory lost its $100,000 in annual funding from NASA and another $50,000 slated for an instrument. By 1998, Ohio State University had demolished the telescope. Over the years, astronomers have followed up on the WOW signal, either trying to explain it away or relocate it. However, the signal is really just one of many similar detections made over the years, and once observatory computers became sophisticated enough for real-time follow-ups, the number of mystery signals dropped. Recently, astronomers have discovered fast radio bursts, FRBs, which were initially seen as strong radio signals that appeared just once. The WOW signal fixation is something the public is interested in far more than astronomers are, and people often interpret it as an alien code that's being sent as a direct message to humans. However, Emmons still doesn't have a guess as to what it could have said. Heard of the Great Attractor? Well, let's discuss this now. This is basically a gravitational anomaly located in the direction of the constellation Norma, about 220 million light years away from Earth. It was first discovered in the 1970s, and scientists have been studying it ever since. The Great Attractor is so named because it seems to be pulling galaxies towards it with a gravitational force that is stronger than the combined gravitational pull of all the visible matter in the region. It is estimated to be about 150 million times more massive than our own Milky Way galaxy. The exact nature of the Great Attractor is still not fully understood, but it is thought to be a region of dark matter, a mysterious substance that does not emit, absorb, or reflect light, and is therefore invisible to telescopes. Dark matter is believed to make up about 85% of the matter in the universe, but its properties are still not well understood. The Great Attractor also seems to be located at the center of a large, low-density region of space known as the Zone of Avoidance. This region is so named because it is difficult to observe due to the large amounts of dust and gas in our own galaxy that block the view of distant objects. The study of the Great Attractor and the Zone of Avoidance is important for understanding the large-scale structure and evolution of the universe. It is also an active area of research, and scientists continue to study this gravitational anomaly in order to learn more about the mysterious nature of dark matter and the forces that shape our universe. The Great Attractor is an example of a gravitational anomaly in space, and it appears to be a region of dark matter that is exerting a powerful gravitational force on the galaxies around it. The Milky Way was first discovered in the 1970s moving in the direction of Centaurus at 600 kilometers slash s. In the 1980s, cosmic microwave background, CMB, that poles were used to reflect the motion of the local group of galaxies toward the Great Attractor. 
This revealed that the Milky Way is not the only galaxy impacted and an approximation of 400 elliptical galaxies are moving toward it beyond the ZOA. There are a couple of examples of great attractors. Laniakea Supercluster The proposed Laniakea Supercluster is defined as the Great Attractors Basin. It covers approximately four main galaxy superclusters, including former superclusters of Virgo and Hydra Centaurus, and spans across 500 million light years. Because it is not dense enough to be gravitationally bound, it should be dispersing as the universe expands, but it is instead anchored by a gravitational focal point. Thus, the Great Attractor would be the core of the new supercluster. Bella Supercluster, in 2016, a multinational team of South African, European, and Australian researchers announced the discovery of the Vela Supercluster in the region of the Great Attractor. Using data from the AA Omega Spectrograph, the 3.9 meters Anglo Australian Telescope, and the Southern African Large Telescope, astronomers detected a region of galactic overdensity consistent with the supercluster designation, which provides the requisite explanation for a gravitational attraction in the Shapley Supercluster neighborhood. Let's move forward to the topic of fast radio bursts, FRBs. These are intense, millisecond-duration bursts of radio waves that come from beyond our galaxy, and their origins are still a mystery. They were first discovered in 2007 by astronomers studying archival data, but it was not until 2017 that astronomers were able to pinpoint the exact location of an FRB. FRBs are extremely powerful and can release as much energy in a few milliseconds as the sun does in an entire day. They are also very rare, with only a few dozen ever detected. FRBs are believed to be coming from very distant sources, possibly billions of light years away, but the exact mechanism behind their creation is still unknown. There are a few theories about what could be causing FRBs, including the collision of neutron stars, the collapse of a supermassive star, or even the activities of intelligent extraterrestrial life. However, none of these theories have been confirmed, and the true source of FRBs remains a mystery. One of the most intriguing aspects of FRBs is their unpredictability. They can occur at any time and in any part of the sky, making them difficult to study. However, advancements in technology and the development of new instruments are allowing astronomers to detect and study more FRBs, which could lead to a better understanding of their origins and potential implications for our understanding of the universe. The Lorimer Burst, also known as the First Fast Radio Burst FRB, is a high-energy burst of radio waves that was first detected in 2007 by Duncan Lorimer and his student, David Narkivik, while they were analyzing archival data from the Parkes Observatory in Australia. The burst lasted for only 5 milliseconds, but during that brief period, it released more energy than the sun does in a month. At the time of its discovery, the nature and origin of the Lorimer burst were not well understood. It was initially thought to be caused by a terrestrial or instrumental source, but subsequent observations and analyses ruled out those possibilities. Today, the Lorimer burst is recognized as the first known example of a fast radio burst, FRB, a class of high-energy astrophysical phenomenon that continues to intrigue astronomers and astrophysicists to this day. Another notable example of a fast radio burst, FRB, is FRB 121102, which was first detected in 2012 and has been observed multiple times since then. It is located in a dwarf galaxy about 3 billion light years away from Earth. FRB 121102 is particularly interesting because it is the only FRB that has been observed to repeat. This suggests that the source of the burst is not a one-time event, but rather a periodic or ongoing phenomenon. The repeating nature of FRB 121102 has allowed scientists to study it in more detail and has led to some intriguing hypotheses about its origin, such as the possibility that it is caused by a highly magnetized neutron star or a type of star called magnetar. FRB 180916, G0 158 plus 65. This FRB was the first to be detected within our own Milky Way galaxy, and it has helped to confirm that FRBs are indeed extragalactic in origin.
finally, a rogue planet, also known as an interstellar planet or an orphan planet, is a planet that does not orbit a star and instead drifts freely through space. It is estimated that there could be billions of rogue planets in our Milky Way galaxy alone. Despite the lack of a host star, rogue planets can still have atmospheres and may even have conditions suitable for life if they are close enough to a heat source. Some researchers have even suggested that life may have originated on a rogue planet and later traveled to habitable planets through interstellar space. The study of rogue planets is a relatively new field, and much is still unknown about these mysterious objects. However, advances in technology and observational techniques may lead to the discovery of more rogue planets and the opportunity to learn more about their properties and origins. On the other hand, hypervelocity stars are rare objects that travel through space at extremely high speeds, often exceeding the escape velocity of our Milky Way galaxy. They are believed to have been ejected from the galactic center by gravitational interactions with supermassive black holes or other objects. Hypervelocity stars can reach speeds of up to 1,000 km 3.6 million km a, making them some of the fastest objects in the universe. The ejection of hypervelocity stars occurs when a binary star system interacts with a supermassive black hole, known as the Hills Mechanism. They are difficult to observe because they move so quickly and are often located far from our galaxy. However, astronomers have identified several of these objects through their unique spectral signatures, which can provide important insights into the structure and evolution of our galaxy. One interesting connection between these two phenomena is that rogue planets could potentially be accelerated to become hypervelocity planets or stars. This could happen if the rogue planet or star passes too close to a massive object like a black hole which could slingshot it to high speeds. The study of rogue planets and hypervelocity stars is important for understanding the dynamics of star systems and galaxies. It also sheds light on the ways in which objects can be ejected from their homes in space and the potential for these objects to travel through the universe on their own. Mind blown already? Well, that's enough for the day. We hope you enjoyed learning about some of the incredible and awe-inspiring phenomena that occur in our universe. Did any of these space phenomena surprise you? Which one was your favorite? Let us know in the comments below. If you're interested in learning more about space and the wonders of the universe, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video. And if you have any suggestions for future topics you'd like us to cover, feel free to let us know. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.